Well, place your bets. Can I get to this video without going on a libertarian rant? <laughs> Honestly, uh, my money's probably on no, but I'll, I'll try my best. No promises, but I'll try, okay? So here we got a thing I made, and it's a 3D printed thing for doing stuff. Now what sort of stuff? Uh, well, the type of stuff where if you're uh, already in the know, you probably already know. And if you're not in the know, then my question for you is if you'd like to know more, <laughs> okay? Uh, the downside is we can't talk about more too much right here because this is YouTube, which is, you know, owned by Google. They have rules. It's a private platform, censorship, et cetera, et cetera. Things I, I don't really like, but I do understand and I am fine with because, you know, it is a private platform and I do appreciate YouTube on the whole and the way it has enabled uh, so much free speech, whether or not they like the fact they've enabled that free speech. Uh, am, I, am I getting too libertarian? Or, okay, I'll, I'll try to cut that back. All right. Uh, anyway, so I do appreciate that, but we can't go into too much detail here. So all I want to do is give you the absolute lowdown on the print itself and just very simple basics on like what orientation to print, you know, things you might need to clean up, etc. And then where to find other information that I'm in the process of putting out um, on less private platforms that you might find useful when engaging in you know, wholesome, fun, legal, safe activities, you know, such as the ones you might, you might do with these, okay? So I guess uh, covering first where you're gonna find this stuff. For the time being, I am putting it up on Thingiverse, you know, the, the place you put basically all the 3D printed stuff, right? Uh, and I'm pretty sure it'll stay there because, you know, they're, they seem to be fine with this stuff over there. So I, I do expect to stay up on Thingiverse, but as a, another backup and another thing for my channel that I want to, you know, keep growing it with, I am also, uh, starting a channel over on Library, uh, L-B-R-Y. I guess, um, well, right now, they're also starting a, a new website called Odyssey, right? O-D-Y-S-E-E. -E. Uh, Library is a tech company that launched this platform uh, a couple years ago, and the gist of it is it's like... Um, like torrents on a blockchain forming uh, like a YouTube alternative, right? <laughs> Personally, for me, I find it very interesting because I'm a software engineer and like this sort of like nerdy tech stuff, it, it's up my alley, right? But for those of you who it's not up your alley, they have Odyssey, which is now the user-friendly front end. That's basically like a, a chintzy YouTube clone, but they are working on improving that and making it better. And you will find content on there, uh, you know, for my channel that you will not find, you know, over here on YouTube because of, because of the, you know, the rules and things that I do again, want to abide by. Uh, now, I just made that uh, channel on there earlier today, so the videos of mine right now from YouTube are in the process of syncing over. That'll take a couple days, and then I can begin publishing additional stuff on top of that. So everything here on YouTube will also be available there, uh, and then there'll be extra content on there that I might at least, you know, announce over here, uh, but I can't directly link to because, again, you know, there's restrictions. I just don't want to step on any toes. I, wanna, I do want to, you know, follow their rules. So instead of me linking to things, you can just go ahead and Google them. <laughs> it's, you know, the irony of that, the irony of that is not lost on me. Trust me, okay? In full disclosure, I haven't yet put this guy here to use, okay? This is version 3.0 of my jig, and that means there's already a 1.0 and a 2.0. So this one here is brand new, haven't used it yet, but since it's based on two prior versions, I'm pretty sure it's it's almost on the money. There's a few small things I want to tweak because, uh, you know, this is a pretty big revamp from uh, version 2 to version 3. And some clearances like this stuff here I didn't get right uh, just because it's a much larger print than before. But I will have those fixed in version 3.1. I just want to get this out and publish right now because, uh, well, because <laughs> it's 2020 and I have friends bugging me for the files. So <laughs> as long as, you know, I'm working on it, I'll, uh, I'll get the version 3.0 out. I'll shoot the video of me actually using this thing to get the demonstration how to do that. Again, not for YouTube, right? Uh, and then when that's done, I can incorporate any fixes that will be into version 3.1, which should be 99.95% .95 the same. Uh, and then if there are anyone else, you know, who go out and use this thing, they can also let me know what you think about it and either uh, use the files I'm uploading to change it yourself because it's in FreeCAD, open source software, all that good stuff, uh, or just tell me and if there's any good ideas you got, uh, I can try to incorporate them. Uh, now, again, this is version 3.0 because 1.0 was a total flop, absolute mess, never going to see the light of day, uh, and version 2 was usable but limiting because my printer back then was a Lulzbot Mini V1, which I'd bought like about six years ago, it, it's, it was a pretty old printer by now. Uh, it was one of the earlier ones you can get for like actual home use. And it's actually my first exposure to CNC. So, you know, go figure, I got that six years ago and look at me now, running a CNC nominally YouTube channel, built a CNC plasma cutter, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, expert amateur nowadays. But um, yeah, I, I found it pretty limiting working in the six by six bed. So now I upgraded to an uh, Ender 3 V2 
which cost about $200. Um, so definitely on the lower end, but still pretty respectable out of the box. Actually better than the uh, Lowell's Butt Mini V1. Because go figure, right? Technology gets better over the course of six years, right? Technology advances. Who would have thought? Uh, you know, maybe the founding thought. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> before I go, okay, calm down, man. Really, the Enter 3 impressed me enough. If you either don't have a printer or don't have one big enough for these parts, just go ahead and get one of them. Really, it's like $209, okay? It's cheap enough, you basically can't go wrong. If you either get it and you find like you don't like printing or it's too hard or you don't have time for it or whatever, no big deal, you know, it wasn't that expensive. If you find out you like it a lot, then there's still plenty of room for you to upgrade or you can make it you know, better over time or you can go and buy a better printer outright. And again, you didn't spend that much money on the Ender, so it isn't that big of a loss, right? Uh, and then uh, for me personally, I'll probably be taking the time to upgrade it, you know, over the course of the next few months because that's the kind of guy I am and I have a disease. <laughs> I basically went and bought a new machine to DIY a thing to DIY a thing I'd already DIY before twice <laughs> you know yeah I uh, that yeah I have a disease but anyway moving on to the prints um, because these are bigger parts right I was able to print on the bigger bed you do have a lot of print time here roughly like 40 hours it's like 10 and 10 12 and then a couple of odds and ends here now part of that is I did print these on rather slow settings I did a, a 0.2 millimeter layer height 35% uh, infill four layer walls and most things this guy did cut that back a little bit because I've these I want to make strong because they're going to have some clamping force on them. Um, this guy is not, so I made that a bit you know, lighter because it was already like a 12 hour print. So, but all in all, I, you know, I put a good bit of plastic here to just make sure I don't have any problems at all and printed it nice and slow to make sure I didn't have any problems at all. I did print one side of this before at like 100 millimeters a minute, <laughs> faster than an Ender 3 is supposed to go. Um, and it can print that, you know, it can still spit the plastic out, but the accuracy definitely suffered and I could tell. Things were out by like, 364 of an inch, you know, here I am, 364, yeah, uh, between like here and here, and that that will not do. So I slowed things back down to like 60 millimeters a second, which is more on par with the, the Ender 3 typically does, and then they came out pretty nice, you know. There are some places, again, it'll clear up just because my CAD doesn't have enough clearance on it already, uh, you know, like right here around this little blob, uh, back in here, uh, over on this guy, it's more the same, and then over here and over here, and then on this part, there's a nice big area here you're gonna chunk out. And you can do that either with a, a Dremel or a, a die grinder, also works really well, basically a Dremel on steroids, but you know, whatever works for you, or a utility knife, if you don't mind cutting your fingers off, that, that, that also works. Uh, let's see, for the assembly of it, we've got a couple of holes on these two parts, and those are the, the primary thing. Uh, there are three holes here for quarter inch bolts that go through. You need like a, a three inch long bolt to go between there and then hold these together. And then on the top and the back, there are holes designed to be tapped for a quarter 20. And then you can use some socket cap screws. I think you should have one of them floating. Yeah, socket cap screws in here to either hold this back plate down in there or this top plate on here, like this, these wings facing back, but they get up against that. We'll get to that more when I actually do a demonstration uh, in the other videos to, to come still. <laughs> or, you know, for these guys right there and then bolt it down. I guess if you really didn't want to get a tap, right, you could use these holes at least as simple through holes and then just go all the way down to the bottom. But then you can't use the holes in the back. Now, is that necessary? Eh, probably not, honestly, if you got. You got these guys clamped to each other, you know, and they're, they're butted up fully against each other. And you got this guy on top and it's all in a vice. It's probably good enough. Um, but, you know, I want to do belt and suspenders. So I got, got all of them, got the tap. And it, it's really not, not that big an investment again. You know, probably already got one of these in your shop anyway. And uh, it does, I think, make for a, a nicer experience. Uh, let's see. As for the orientation of these prints, uh, normally being inclined to say whatever orientation you know, works best for you is, <laughs> and it, there I go for with, uh, with the jokes again. But no, you really, you gotta print these in a certain way. You know, the orientation is not optional here. Cause you print it like this, it's gonna be support, you know, support city all over the place. And that's just no good cause the supports then leave you a rough surface where you need a smooth surface. So obviously these two, you print the obvious way. Uh, this guy here, you wanna print that way and that way you don't even worry about supports and whatever and this here getting droopy because you want a nice flat surface up top for when you're using your router so you have room for this guy to ride and so keep it uh, you know nice and flat and you could also use a drill press for this whole setup uh, but the earlier ones I did were using a drill press and that was absolutely miserable again we'll, we'll get into that later but I, I think the router will be much more fun so I'm going to use the router this time and then 
depending on how this goes, I may, you know, may very likely encourage that you do the same. And given the size of this base, you probably could use a full size router as well and not need to stick to a palm router, but a palm router, you know, it's, it's nice and handy and should be easy to, you know, to keep good control over it while you're doing your work. Uh, let's see, what else? So yeah, and with the orientation like this, uh, I did put supports in these holes here, just to make sure they didn't get all oval or whatever. But again, you could probably skip that too if you didn't want to bother. And uh, at least with these being through holes, it's very easy to knock the support material out on these two, right? Just, you know, hit it with a, a tap and, or a, a punch and it'll just like knock right out. On the back ones here, I did the drill it because, you know, they don't go all the way through, but at least they do meet up with this hole right here. So you can get the little bits out easier. And then when you go and tap them, you don't have all the schmoo uh, built up in the bottom of a blind tapped hole. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, these parts and these parts all have slots in them to give you some extra uh, play. Because, you know, for the thing we're working on, uh, you know, cast parts don't have the same dimensions all the time, right? They're cast parts. Some parts are not, uh, you know, a strict tolerance because it doesn't really matter, right? And because there is room for, for some play in the blueprints. And stuff like that includes this width right here. So to account for that width, uh, I gave a nice generous slot on all of these. It gives you some side-to-side -side play. Honestly, it's it's probably a lot more side-to-side -side play than you need. It's a, an eighth of an inch of room side-to-side -side, uh, when the casting will probably vary by like 10 thou at most. So probably could have been tighter than the, uh, the width I gave here, but it does still work. Uh, and honestly, you could probably just eyeball it centered if you want to, but I did include a feature on it with a help if you so choose. So you can use like calipers or something to help you mark a center line on your work. And then I got grooves on the bottom here that will help indicate what the center is supposed to be on these jigs. So if you either take a, a thin piece of wire or a piece of thread or whatever, and just kind of hold that down and run that in the groove, then that will let you center it, you know, looking down from the top at the line you'd scored along the center of your work. And that's the idea there. And because you got the uh, this on uh, the bottom here, you do want to print this I guess upside down. So this bottom side is facing up while you print and then down while you use it. That's also important because this uh, array of holes here is not symmetrical, right? You might notice this pocket is also not symmetrical, right? Looking for the top, you get the same kind of offset pattern here. I guess in theory, I could have made it symmetrical, but uh, I wanted to be as honest to the blueprints I had as possible. So I made it, you know, the, the official way. And this guy also asymmetrical, fits right in there can drop all the way down and through, and then it has a little slot here for, you know, engaging in fun and wholesome activities. And then the holes on this guy are also meant for tapping quarter 20. But the only reason for those taps is to give you a place to put a bolt in, just like this, so you have a handle to pull this guy out again. Otherwise, when that falls all the way down and through, you know, be stuck in there and you have to like pry it out. But a little tapped hole there gives you a, a better handle to pull it back out. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see what else, what else, what else. Um, Holes on all these things for drilling are marked for uh, just an eighth inch hole. And that's just to be a pilot hole. Okay, so pilot holes on here, pilot holes on here. Uh, the actual drill bit sizes you use in this, if you decide to use this piece, do matter. Uh, because if you drill too big, then like if you drill three quarter inch on all these holes, firstly, your, your gang drilling is gonna suck. And secondly, um, you're gonna go too wide, okay? But if you look at the CAD files, I do have the size of the spec out, and I'll talk about it more when I do the demo, uh, but just you know, be aware you do need to drill these to set size, or just keep it small and give yourself more to mill, or skip it entirely, give yourself more to mill. Yeah, you, know, you can do that too, and that's that's also totally fine. Uh, on here, these are again, uh, you know, just an eighth of an inch, to let you go back and drill it out to the full size later. Uh, a drill press will work best, obviously, but if you don't have one of them, I do include a, a little guide block, and this is, uh, let's see, where I got any drill bits? I got another bolt. So <laughs> these are all sized, I think, uh, what, eighth inch, five thirty second, three sixteenths, uh, quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch, just so it'll help you, you know, hold your drill bit straight up and down if you decide to drill by hand or to check it straight up and down if you're going to use a drill press. Um, let's see. And this is an inch tall by default, so you can uh, scale that as much as you need, either taller or shorter, depending on the length of your drill bits, taps, whatever you want to use, and even use this as a tapping guide, just generally speaking for other shop purposes. Like now I have a handy quarter inch tapping guide or half inch, three eighths, whatever, for other projects to do in the shop, which is kind of nice. Multi-purpose part. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, and this part here is also sized to be a little bit under, so it does fit cleanly through here, right? You saw how nicely that slipped in? Right, let's see if I can get that. And the moment he goes to sit on camera, <laughs> anyway. 
yeah, so this is 15 thou underneath, and that is specified in the CAD. Uh, I think that'll be pretty good spec, but again, we'll find out, and I might, I might adjust that in version 3.1 when it gets to it. But uh, that is meant to be just a slip fit in there and still stay, you know, pretty, pretty much on point on its own. And this dimension here isn't super critical anyway. So it, again, it should be good. Uh, let's see. Oh, and this hole here also does have a purpose, but again, that's that's for later on. And I think that's, those most of the caveats I got for, for this version here. Uh, I guess other stuff on this, uh, this is probably, well, <laughs> If I could be so bold to say it, I think this is the best jig I've seen so far. At least when I when I began and uh, embarked on this project, there were no no other good options out there, which is why I decided to go and like actually design my own and go through all that pain in the ass. Um, but of course, since I began, there was one other guy who did another three D printed jig that looked at least pretty decent, uh, and that was. Uh, by control P, right? So control P is the, the buttons you hit to print. Control P are the buttons you, you know, hit the, the pew. But anyway, this guy, uh, he's done a lot of other uh, similar CAD and stuff or similar, similar wholesome fun. Uh, and he came up with his own that uh, similar in idea, but a little bit different. I don't know, you might want to check that one out too. But it wasn't around when I began on this. So I did still want to finish mine and get this published. And then mine also does have the um, added benefit of being done in FreeCAD. Uh, he did publish all the files for his, but unfortunately the main CAD files are done in SolidWorks. Which is like, it's a great program at all if you're a professional CAD uh, you know, engineer. But I, I'm not, most people aren't, and SolidWorks is like, a four thousand dollar license so you know uh i still definitely appreciate the fact you're working this and the fact that all the guys who do that stuff do that work and i understand why they need uh solid works to really do professional quality work the way they do but at least for us home gamers having uh at least one version of it done in freecad does improve on its ability to be open source and for people to try it out modify it as they need it uh possibly you know have changes to um suggest and push back and then make a a better thing overall that we can all share in as a community, I guess. Um, yeah, so I think that that pretty much covers it. Uh, we will also go over the FreeCAD file in those future videos, but I won't do a full step-by-step -step of like how everything was drawn and showing exactly how I, I did it because honestly, I'm not, I'm not that good at CAD. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm okay, I'm passable. Uh, I wanna show you how I put the file together enough to make you, uh, you know, able to edit on your own. But as far as making you watch the whole multi-hour process, me drawing the thing out, that, I'm not, not that cruel. So I will say if you wanna learn free CAD really well, uh, the channel I recommend is Joko Engineering. Uh, maybe it's Yoko, I'm not really sure. It's uh, J-O-K-O -O Engineering. And that guy's stuff is like, Top notch, he's got a ton of different free CAD videos, some for um, some for SolidWorks, you know, LibreCAD, and a couple others as well, but tons of really great free CAD stuff, and I'm so glad he's around, because it means those are videos I don't have to do. Ah, thank God, because again, oof, CAD is, uh, I do like the results of it, but it is a lot of work, and uh, well, I guess all the work I put in this, I hope, uh, hope you enjoy it and get some use out of it. So, um, Links will be, uh, well, links won't be down below, but you can Google them on your own time, uh, both for my account on Thingiverse, which is the same name as I got here, and later, again, in the next few days, there should be stuff as well over on uh, Library, aka, you know, now you call it, I guess, Odyssey for the user-friendly front end. Uh, that's all for this video, so until the next one, peace.